The first question I have is, what are the key tenants of your platform? So, first, I, I absolutely love the city. I was raised here, I raised my family here, and I feel like if we don't act to address affordable housing and equity issues, we are going to a city that's much more of an international resort destination for the wealthy, and it's going to push a lot of the people who work here, um, who study here, away including our, our children, including our seniors. And so I am deeply concerned as well that citizens are disconnecting from their city because it's not meeting their needs. And so they're becoming very cynical um, and as a consequence, um, being very complacent and not engaging, not feeling as if the city is, 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 um, is there for them or their government is there for them. So that can create a real democratic deficit. So that's also something I'm deeply, deeply concerned about. Um, so obviously inequity is where I'm going to put a great deal of focus, focusing in on addressing inequity, housing affordability, looking at supporting seniors and, and how seniors uh, need to get the care and housing support that they need. Um, I'm also looking at uh, health care on our streets and how we address the opioid poisoning. And um, I'm also deeply, deeply committed to addressing climate change, but also to creating a, a really strong, healthy environment and resilient city. So those are some of the things that are on my platform to address. As mayor, you would be working with likely a diverse city council. And my second question would be, as mayor, how would you see yourself working with a diverse group of city councillors? Would you see your mayoralty as an imperial mayoralty, that it's your way or the highway, and expect councillors to kowtow to you? Or would your approach be more democratic and welcoming of diverse opinions on issues of contention? I have spent... 30 years of my life, not just in Vancouver, but around the world working on democracy. I've spent my life bringing diverse groups of people together to solve issues, to solve problems, whether it's in Afghanistan, Cambodia, here in Vancouver, or working on energy issues across the country. So I am deeply committed to ensuring that everybody shows up as counselors for work and are fully committed to serving the needs of Vancouver citizens. So I welcome diversity, uh, but I intend to ensure that all of us work uh, tirelessly to support uh, addressing the problems that we have in the city. And I'm, I'm excited about the quality of candidates coming forward. So I will be much more of a second as a mayor, as you guys outlined as a second mayor, which is a, is, is a mayor that is a facilitator convener um, who really ensures that, that people bring their best selves forward to the table. As you are aware, council meetings can often be long, arduous, and contentious. Um, how would you approach the very demanding job of chairing council meetings that can often last up to 14 hours. How would you set about to establish a tone for public meetings? And how would you encourage respectful interaction both between city councillors and yourself and city councillors, especially those with whom you might disagree on an issue? Ray, you used a word, respectful, and I think that that is absolutely critical. Um, I've always found that if I have respect for people and for processes, and if we create the conditions for people to be heard and to be respected, that processes go so much better. And I am definitely committed to that. So in terms of, I have worked for 30 years chairing meetings. I have worked around the clock, 24 hours in meetings, convening meetings. I've worked in very, very difficult conflict zones. Uh, where the stakes were extremely high. Um, in South Asia, for example, working with the South Asian Editors Forum, where um, journalists who could make or break politicians would get together and I would be convening those meetings and facilitating them, and they would go for 16 hours. Uh, so I'm not, I have no problem convening difficult meetings over long hours, but my sense is that those long hours aren't necessary if people feel like they're respected and heard and, and can see a vision of what they need to be doing. And that takes good leadership as well in modeling good behavior, in modeling respect for other people. And, uh, and 
I actually am excited. That's where I have considerable skills to bring to the table. The provision of affordable housing is a key issue in the current civic election. How would you see yourself working with senior levels of government to encourage them to invest in the provision of affordable housing in Vancouver? How would a Shauna Sylvester administration address the issue of homelessness as well and the provision of social housing? So the first part, working with senior levels of government, second part, homelessness and the provision of social housing. So I think the first thing that we need to do is reframe what's going on with housing. There's a lot of conversations about supply and demand, and I think when we look at those narrow market um, versions of ourselves, we tend to polarize this whole conversation on, on, on how we move forward with actions. Right now we need to talk about the supply and the need and what the, of Vancouverites, and the need uh, is really critical. So working with different levels of government is something I've done for, again, 30 years. I have no problem. I've worked extensively with the federal government. I've actually worked with the minister responsible for urban issues, trying to develop a new urban agenda, uh, trying to create the conditions for greater municipal power so that as we're watching the downloading that's happening to cities, that we have the municipal power, the financing power, to deal with some of the new challenges that we have. No problem working with provincial government. I want to see the money that's being taxed out of Vancouver actually comes back to Vancouver so that we can, in fact, deal with the issues that, that are going on in the city right now. I believe $25 million is going out of the city to other parts of the, uh, of the, of the province. Um, if the 3% tax, uh, property tax goes forward, that, that the provincial government entering into a, uh, an arena that has been traditionally um, the purview of the municipal government, property tax is one of the few taxing authorities that we have. It makes me nervous that the provincial government is entering into that, but if they're taking the money, it's got to come back to Vancouver. So to serve our housing needs. So that's, that's, I feel very strongly about negotiating fairly with the provincial and federal government. It's not an issue for me in doing that. Um, but I also think that we need to be looking at what we're doing as a city to increase the cost of housing here. I think there's a great deal that we can do to reduce the cost, certainly in, in the permitting times, but also in how we're using land. I think all public land needs to be used for public benefit. So I want to see more cooperative housing um, be built out. I want to see the renewal of co-op leases immediately. I want to be looking at how we create housing that is for people that are living on disability incomes and welfare incomes. We do not have enough housing and particularly for women and children who are disproportionately impacted by homelessness and I want to ensure that we are building out not what's called supportive housing which puts it at 30 percent of one's income but those that are at the level of um, disability income uh, caps and welfare caps. I want to see that. And I want mixed use housing. That's where I think co-op. Um, I've said it before and I'll say it again. I think that we could become North America's capital, excuse me, capital for cooperative housing and co-housing. And those are models that work, um, that create community, uh, that don't just warehouse people. And I want to see them expanded in the city. Is a commitment to Vancouver's public service, the 3,500 women and men who are employed by the city, a feature of your campaign? And are you committed to maintaining jobs in Vancouver's public service and committed to negotiating a fair, reasonable, and judicious contract with QP15 and QP1004 in the next round of bargaining? I think one of the greatest assets that we have as a city is the people that work for the city. And I have uh, worked over many years with many parts of the city. And one of the things that impresses me is just how much innovation and creative thinking is coming from the city about how to um, shift ways of working. And, and many of that's coming from QP employees and themselves. And, and so so they have ideas of how we can make the city more effective, and I want to be open to hearing and learning from them. I also feel very strongly in the right of uh, people to collectively bargain, and I am I will be fully supportive of the collective bargaining process. Um, I am not 
a union buster. I believe strongly in the history of unions. I think that they've been a great part of what's built this province. And so I'm excited to work in creative and innovative ways with you. And, uh, and very excited about creating an environment it's not partisan in, in City Hall, but creating an environment where we respect the professionalism of our city staff and and we learn from them in terms of the options that they're presenting to us. Two more questions. The second to last question is, what is your commitment to our parks and recreation system? Does the renewal or renovation of community centers in the city of Vancouver feature as a tenant in your campaign platform? The way our community assets is something that we haven't spent a lot of time talking about. Uh, there's, it, although I'm using a word, uh, a phrase that we haven't heard much of, it's, it's one I'm going to try and define a little bit. I want to see us have a civic asset strategy. That means that we know all of those public service buildings that exist and that we're using them to the greatest effect and that we are enhancing them and building their capacity to serve our community. One of the big parts of what I'm running on is that I think that so many people in this city don't feel connected to the city, don't feel like they belong or that they have been involved. And, and the places that we can create voice, where we can create the opportunities for people to connect is to our community centers, to our libraries, to our schools, all of those all of those assets that we have as a city that belong to us. And I think what we need to do is we need to look at linking them. We need to look at how we can support our neighborhoods, our communities, in building and strengthening those assets. So I can't wait to dig in and to look at the budgets that are there and how we can support those community center associations, how we can support the neighborhood associations, how we can support our parks board and school board in actually building strong linkages so that we really have um, a web of services that, that hold this community, that support this community, and really support those people, particularly immigrants and refugees that need leadership training, women and mothers and children who, who, who need support services. So I'm excited about what's possible there. Is support for the arts one of the tenets of your campaign? Over the course of the past 10 years, the Vancouver Playhouse uh, was shuttered. I'm wondering what a how a Shauna Sylvester administration would set about to support arts in the city of Vancouver. One of the things that I did when I was at Simon Fraser University Public Square is we hosted something called We the City, which was really looking at how do we look at urban building, how do we look at city buildings through the lens of arts and, and, and community arts in particular. And one of the things that I would say about this city is that we have an extremely vibrant community um, our community, we've got it in terms of uh, just within the, um, if we think of the East Side Cultural Crawl, or we think of the many alternative galleries that exist, or we think of the music industry. What we don't have are spaces for the base for them to live and work. And we need to create that vibrancy. We need to create spaces for living and working for artists here. So art is in my, when I think about a city, I think of the heartbeat coming from uh, the arts and cultural community. Um, and I actually think it is a strength of the city that needs, that we need to listen to artists in terms of understanding what they need and how they want to be involved. We need to create the public spaces uh, where we all come together to, to demonstrate our creativity and our sense of connection to one another. And uh, and we need to create um, practical spaces for them to work and live. Um, so, yes, it is very much a part of the backbone. I don't think you could have a...